Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my March reading wrap up. This is the biggest reading wrap up I have ever done. I just took my thumbnail and this is what we're dealing with. I have 14 different books for you here and only one of them was a DNF that I didn't completely finish. So this was a huge reading month for me. So let's go ahead and hop into our first one which happens to be on top and that is Against the Current by Olivia Matthews. This is the first in the Spice Isle Bakery Mystery Series. I really loved this. This was a fantastic first book in the Cozy Mystery Series. So our main character in this is Lindsay Murray and with her family she is opening up the Spice Isle Bakery which is a West Indian bakery and she's opening it up in the Little Caribbean like part of New York and so she's really excited she's going to connect back to her Grenadian roots she's opening it with her family this has been like a lifelong dream of hers she's in her like late 20s I want to say and she's a delightful character her family is fabulous I love her family they're all like they got each other's backs they're supportive her cousin's really awesome her grandmother is like a fashionista and like speaks her mind her brother's like kind of the overprotective brother and he's also a lawyer which turns out to be really helpful in this book and I love this so this basically the main plotline for this it's a cozy mystery of course so the main like conflict is that there is a bakery owner in the area named Claudio he's like an Italian bakery and he is very angry at Lindsay for opening a like competing bakery in the area even though there's enough people for both of them and he just he makes a point to keep telling her that and she finally stands up for herself she's very much like a people pleaser kind of person and she's trying to get over that and so she puts her foot down and is like hey like get out of my bakery like you know you can't speak to me like this she puts her foot down and then of course he ends up dead and that's kind of the premise of the plot so really really fun this was a fantastic read like a strong four four and a half stars for me I'm very excited for the next book in the series especially because I didn't love the other series that I had read by this author I think it's called the Peach Coast like library mysteries or something something like that I'll put a picture on screen I, the first book in that series like murder on page one or something like that I didn't care for it was just I didn't connect with any of the characters I was kind of bored with mystery like I, I finished it but it was just I, I didn't go back to book two like it really just didn't grip me in any way but this one love the characters love the plot line I love learning about the West Indian like baked goods like I don't really know anything about those types of baked goods and so that was really interesting and I'm so excited this was a great series highly recommend okay so this next one is a cozy mystery that did kind of flop for me unfortunately and this was book two in the series so I was pretty I, I thought this would be a good like strong contender but it really wasn't and that is Doom with a View by Kate Kingsbury this is a Mary Ghost in Mystery it is for my library so I'm just covering up the name right there and uh, it didn't do it for me I did finish the book the main character in this is Melanie and she works with her grandmother Lisa and they have the Mary Ghost in together and so in the first book there was the first book was set where they were working to open the inn and it hadn't opened yet, but this was the first book where this, the inn was like open, it's thriving, they're having their first guest, they're very, very excited, and one of their guests is murdered. And it's the type of mystery where it looks like it could only be somebody who's at the inn, so it's kind of like a closed off mystery. So you have all these guests and they're all forced to stay there longer than they had planned on staying together, they're like a book club or book group that had all come together, so they know each other, and so Melanie and Lisa are like interviewing them and trying to find out who might have wanted the person dead, and like, it's something like the premise is something I would love, because I love those more closed mysteries, I love knowing this is the pool of suspects, it's one of them. Like I love mysteries like that or thrillers like that. But what I had a problem with was this book just seemed so random. Like the middle of it, I felt like there was no plot development. I felt like she was running like random errands, but they just like it was just random errand after random errand and like nothing seemed to tie into the plot for a while and I was finding myself getting very bored. I do love the the um, relationship between the grandmother and our main character Melanie. I think they are a fabulous pair. I love them. I thought the ending of the mystery was really good. I thought it came together really good but it was just that middle where the like the pacing and just like the randomness. I didn't I don't know, it was like the ending and the beginning of this book were very strong, the characters were strong, but the pacing and like the middle of the book just, I was, I almost DNF'd it. I'm glad I didn't because I liked the ending and that made it a three star read for me because the ending was really good, but I don't know. I think there's only three books out in this series so I will probably see if my library has book three in it. 
So a historical fiction I read this month. This is not cozy at all, just forewarning, because I know I talk about a lot of cozies on this channel. Not cozy at all. This was a recommendation and a loner from my mom, and this book is fabulous. I give it a four stars, mainly because I don't... I, I still don't know what to fully make of the main character, but the book was excellent. It really makes you think. And this is the book My Name is Eva by Suzanne Goldring, and this is set... It's like technically a World War II historical fiction, but it's mostly taking place after World War II, like immediately following the aftermath of World War II. And then we're having flashbacks from her later on when she's elderly and she's in a nursing home. So we have these shifting point of views between her and her past and multiple different years and decades of her life and then her in the future where she's at the nursing home. Now I saw some people on Goodreads mention this and I wanted to mention this just in case it's something that would bother you. It didn't personally bother me because Eva is a very cunning character so I thought this played into her character well but I know some people on Goodreads mentioned that this really bothered them and that is that while she's at the nursing home she's pretending to lose like her memories and her just like her like her mental sharpness basically like she's kind of pretending or playing up that maybe she has like alzheimer's or dementia or something of the sort and she's doing that to avoid telling her niece pat about some of the things that she's finding in eva's home because she's taking over eva's estate now that she's no longer able to care for it herself and she's going through eva's things and eva has a lot of secrets in the past and the secrets were fa fantastic i thought it was so well executed and Basically, Eva is playing up being very like muddled and not being able to remember things as a way like to kind of cover up certain things and For some people on Goodreads that seemed to really bother them for me Like I said, she's a very cunning character this you know it, it fit in line with me because if at her age She was no longer able to like physically protect herself from secrets coming out So now she's mentally doing it by playing up like a part basically so just a forewarning if that would bother you know that going in but what I will say is that this was fantastic. The blurb on the front says, A forbidden secret, a forgotten betrayal, and the promise that cost her everything. This, I, I don't want to give too much away. I, I really don't. So I'm just going to leave it at this. The um, One of the quotes here is, Because Evelyn is a woman with secrets, and Evelyn remembers everything. And she basically makes a promise to the love of her life, and she carries through with that promise. And you see what it costs her. You see the horrible aftermath of the war, which I found... I mean, very disturbing, of course, but very interesting because I feel like a lot of the novels I've read that are historical fiction usually focus on events during or leading up to the war, but not right after. So this was very interesting for me with the timing. Like, I, I enjoyed learning a little bit more about that. And by enjoyed, I mean it, it was interesting and good to know more about what happened, but I mean, not enjoyed in a good way, but <laughs> so yeah, long story short, I would recommend this. It's definitely pretty graphic, although those scenes tend to be brief. I thought the only thing I thought that was a little difficult was the changing timelines. Sometimes they would just jump randomly, it felt like, and you really have to pay attention to the beginning of the chapter where it has like the date and location. You have to pay attention quite closely to that, but otherwise I would recommend this if you enjoy historical fiction, if you are interested in learning more about the aftermath of war and if you're interested in like issues of morality I would find I find this very interesting so I would recommend this I did do a cozy mystery reading vlog and historical fiction reading vlog this month and this was one of the books in it I'll link it above if you want to check it out okay I also read two cozy mysteries that are part of some favorite series of mine we have dying for devil's food by Jen McKinley part of the cupcake bakery mystery series I am now officially caught up with the series this was like the one random one in the middle that I hadn't read I loved this. This might actually be one of my more like favorite ones in the series. Basically our main characters Mel and Aunt, her best friend Angie run fairy tale cupcakes and it's this lovely cupcake bakery. It's very cozy. I love Jen McKinley's characters. They always feel so fleshed out and realistic to me. And Mel and Angie are going back to their high school reunion and Mel doesn't really want to go. They kind of have to twist her arm because she didn't have a very good high school experience. And But Angie gets her to go and unfortunately Mel's high school bully and is found dead and Mel is the main suspect in the case. And this was just a fantastic, interesting look at like who we are now versus like high school and like just how people have changed, how people haven't changed. I thought it was really fun. I loved the themes for this and the cupcakes are just so, so delicious. And I love here. that even though she was one of the prime suspects, Mel did have compassion for her high school bully Cassidy. Like she still 
wanted to solve it not just to help her out because you know her she was one of the suspects but she also wanted to solve it for Cassie's sake and she kind of had some empathy for her high school bully even though she had tormented her for years so I really appreciated that this was a great addition I strongly recommend this it's one of my favorite culinary cozy mysteries the other one I read is Death Gone Awry by Winnie Archer this is a bread shop mystery series this was a strong four stars for me I the series is great. I love this series. The main character's name is Ivy. She is a freelance photographer and like a baking assistant at this wonderful bread shop called Yeast of Eden. And she works there with her boss Olea, who is a Mexican-American. Her and her sisters like run the bakery. There's a lot of really interesting types of bread that I'm always learning about. This actually inspired me to learn to make bread this year. I actually made bread in that reading vlog I linked above if you want to check it out. But this mystery, like it broke my heart. Like I, I was, um, traveling actually when I read this and I was just sitting there reading the ending like zoned out and it was just it hit me hard what I will say about the bread shop mystery series is it definitely has darker themes than a lot of cozy mysteries at least contemporary cozy mysteries so be warned with that the other one that really hit me was crust no one and flower in the attic those were some other ones that really had some darker themes that hit me hard um, this one definitely was an emotional ending. I was definitely sitting there like tearing up. Like it definitely hit me hard, but it was very well executed and I really did enjoy this. The premise for this book is that there is a spring fling going on and Ivy and the rest of the bakery are making some delicious breads for it. Unfortunately, they get the news that one of the school like board of directors is found murdered in her, like her office or one of the school offices. And of course that puts a damper on everything. And Ivy is also shocked to find out that her boyfriend actually had a fling with this lady a long time ago. So there is some drama there as well. And he's also being looked at as one of the suspects because of his past relationship. So there's a lot going on. This is a really fabulous mystery series. I strongly recommend it. If you like series that really have great female friendships, I would really recommend this. You have Miss Branford in this, who is this octogenarian lady, and she is so spunky and colorful and feisty, and I love her. And she always helps Ivy out and gets her to, you know, get going on the case. And then Olea is a wonderful character. I just love the female relationships in this. So highly recommend both of these series. I expected them to be hits. They definitely were because I'm I've read like you know, at least five books in each of these. They're amazing. Really good series. So a book that I actually ended up DNFing, and I talked about this in depth in my Cozy Mystery vlog and Historical Fiction vlog, and that is A Play of Piety, A Jolief the Player Mystery by Margaret Fraser. And I I jumped into the series, like kind of mid-series, and it is a cozy series. I believe you're, you can read it as a standalone, but I found myself just kind of overwhelmed with how many characters there were and there really wasn't any mystery that was getting started anytime soon so I ended up putting this down. I'm going to try to find book one basically because the writing was very beautiful. The writing was it was it was beautiful like it was a gorgeous writing style. I love the descriptions. I just I think I need it's something I really need to go back and read book one with or check out some of her other series. Some of you guys were giving me recommendations about like this other series she has and I'm going to check that out. So I'm not DNFing this in like a bad way. I'm putting it on hold basically, but I want to mention that. Okay, this is it guys. This is one of those books on booktube that has been going crazy even on people's channels who don't normally read cozy mysteries and that is Finley Donovan is Killing It by Elle Cosimano and wow. <laughs> I read this in two nights. This was really good. I'm gonna say four stars for me. I know a lot of people gave it like five stars and were raving about it thinking it's the best thing ever. I do read more cozy mysteries probably than many booktubers do. Um, and I will say this definitely pushed the limits for cozy. I would say I could see why some people are kind of disputing whether it is cozy or not. It's cozy in the sense that you have like an amateur sleuth, you have like the you know small murder suspects, you don't have like a lot of on-screen violence like on screen on screen you know like most of the violence is off the page or it's very like glossed over so it's cozy in that sense but it's definitely a little more uh, a little harsher of a reality probably than most cozy mysteries basically finley donovan if you if you don't know about this book is a writer and she is writing a suspense novel she's under contract with that and she's meeting her agent for lunch one day and she's talking about a contract killer in her book however someone at the lunch overhears her and thinks that Finley Donovan herself is a contract killer and they hire Finley who's in a really bad financial pinch she's got a lot of 
big things happening in her life. She's worried about her children. She's, there's a lot of big issues that money would solve for her. And she offers her a huge amount of money to take out her husband. You know, she mistakenly thinks <laughs> that Finley Donovan is a contract killer, which is what a great plot line. I mean, that's just, it's fantastic. It's so funny, especially because Finley Donovan knows a bit about murder because of all the murder mysteries and thrillers that she's written. So it's kind of, the, it just, it's funny. It's ironic. Um, the humor in this was fantastic. Finley is a very realistic character. Like the front says, most moms are ready to kill someone by 8.30 a.m. on any given morning. Very fun. I'm not personally a mom, but I found it very, like, a lot of it to be very funny, and I think if you were a mom, you'd find it probably even more funny, but it's a really funny read. I really enjoyed Finley. Her assistant, Vero, is very interesting. I really enjoyed her. She was a cool character. She's kind of a nanny to the children. I really enjoyed her and Finley's relationship. This was just hilarious, and every time I thought, okay, we're into the plot, like, something else would be added. It was very twisty, like, again, like the blurb here says, very twisty, a little more twisty and thriller-esque than most cozy mysteries, but again, it still stayed on the cozier side. I mean, there was, you know, a bit of violence, and of course, there's a murder mystery involved, like, you know, obviously, there's going to be a little bit of that mentioned, but it's still very cozy in that sense, and I just, it's, but it was very twisty like a thriller, so it's kind of like thriller meets cozy. I really enjoyed this. I thought this was hilarious. I can't wait to read book two and see where the author takes this. My only critique, really, of this is that it was extremely chaotic, which isn't a bad thing, necessarily, but I felt like I was just getting slammed like with this and that and that and that was like wow like I kept having to take a step back and be like okay wait what's happening because it just felt like some parts of the book so much was happening at once but it was a really fun read. Finley's an amazing character. I love Vero. I hope she's in the second book and yeah I cannot wait for more. So I also read two traditional thrillers this month. One was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I loved this. And I was really nervous going into this because I have read two Riley Sagers previously. One was Lock Every Door, which I gave five stars, and then one was The House Across the Lake, and I gave that one star. I didn't even DNF it. I read the whole thing and I hated it. Like, I truly hated it. It was probably my worst read of last year out of like 120 some books. Like, it was my worst read of last year. So going into this, I was very nervous because I thought this will be make it, break it, whether I continue to read Riley Sager. And I love this. This is like a solid four stars for me. Basically, we have... I love this. It kind of reminds me of books like Rebecca, where you have Manderley, you have that grand estate, and it's very much a part of the plot. Like, the house itself is a character, and I really love books like that. In this book, we have this place called Bainberry Hall, and basically, there had been, like, some kind of death there. It's kind of, like, supposed to be haunted, and Maggie Holt, as a child, her and her mom and her father, when she's, like, five years old, I want to say, they move into this grand estate, and they're trying to, like, kind of get a new lease on life. They're trying to restart, and things happen. Big things, scary things, hauntings, like, things happen. The family literally leaves in the middle of the night and then the father actually ends up saving the family financially by writing this huge book about their like hauntings and ghostly experiences at the house and it's like it becomes like a national bestseller. So Maggie grows up in this like shadow of the book where she, everywhere she goes people know her because she's written into the book as like her you know using her real name and everything. And so people always, like, think of her as, like, the ghost girl or, like, you know, the haunty girl, the spooky girl, something like that, and she hates it. Well, she grows up, and she ends up inheriting the house. And she hasn't been back since she was very, very young. She visits the house, and she is putting it to the test. She's like, is it really haunted? What happened here? Because her parents won't give her answers on certain things, so she doesn't know what is fact and fiction. She's read the book, but she doesn't know what's fact or fiction. And this, oh, I love this book. This book was so good. I wish I could reread it for the first, like, again for the first time. I would consider reading this again, like, during, like, Halloween or something, because it definitely is very spooky. I was a little nervous going in because I'm not huge on supernatural elements with mysteries and thrillers. Like, sometimes a touch of it is fine, but I'm not huge on it. But this did it, everything was so good. It was, it was delivered so well. Everything was perfect. I like, I mean, he didn't miss a beat with his, like all the different little subplots, like everything wrapped up 
so satisfying at the end. I highly recommend this if you are looking for a sit there like glued to the page can't put it down kind of thriller. I read this in two nights and the only reason it took me two nights was because I had to put it away a couple hours before I was going to sleep the first night otherwise I would have had nightmares. So I highly recommend this. It was Thrilling is like an understatement. I loved this book. The other thriller I read this month is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I read One by One by Ruth Ware, which I know a lot of people didn't love as much. I actually really loved it. It's a little more murder mystery like than thriller, so maybe that's part of the critique. I've also read The It Girl and I did enjoy that as well. I think I gave like three and a half stars, but it wasn't my favorite. This is a four star read. I really enjoyed this. This is a perfect like spring or summer read just because I think a lot of people, myself included, associate like the ocean and the beach and like cruise ships with spring and summer. And wow, this book, this book had me questioning everything. So what I loved about this book is our main character is Lo Blacklock. She is a writer for a magazine it's like a travel magazine and she gets this dream gig through the magazine because someone is like on maternity leave and so it kind of just happens that she ends up to go on this new cruise ship called the aurora and the cruise ship it's like the um maiden voyage it's a big deal so all these like celebrities and travel writers and like people in the industry are on the boat for this exciting experience and lo is kind of in a bad place in her life she's kind of falling apart she's got uh, like a drinking problem for sure she's got a lot of lot of issues. Um, she's really not in a good place. It's not going great. So she arrives on the ship and she's like, okay, hopefully this is it. Like, this will be my big break. I can, you know, I can do this. Well, the first night on the boat, she hears a splash in the middle of the night, like a big splash, like a body hits the water kind of splash. And she rushes out and the woman in cabin 10 is not there anymore and she thinks that that woman has been thrown overboard and like, or like murdered and like thrown overboard or falls over accidentally well she alerts the crew and they inform her and everyone else on the boat informs her that there was never a woman staying in cabin 10. let that sink in that would mess me up so bad especially because you're isolated on a cruise ship like that would mess me up so badly so she but she continues to pursue this because she's like no I remember there was this woman in this cabin like there was so she's pursuing this mystery trying to solve if someone was actually thrown overboard or where this person is like she's it's so good but the whole like it's very very psychological like you have a lot of characters who really are making low question herself and if she's like losing it completely the only reason I don't give this five stars is because I felt like there was one thing that was not wrapped up in the end I won't say specifically what just because I don't want to spoil anything but one of the subplots I felt like it didn't wrap up fully the main plot wrapped up really strongly I thought it was very thrilling I was very engaged I think I read this in under 24 hours like it was a very fast-paced super creepy really enjoyable thriller like definitely a very psychological thriller very isolated on the cruise ship a, a kind of book that makes you question the protagonist and her mental state I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So highly recommend this. It was a really great thriller. So one that I just finished last night, it was called No Parm No Foul, A Grilled Cheese Mystery by Linda Riley. This is book two in the series. I read the first one that came out last year. I think gave it like three and a half stars. It was a good intro to the series. I liked it, but it wasn't you know, like a super standout, like most amazing cozy mystery series I'd ever read. So I was really excited for book two. And I, I will say I'm probably going to give this about three and a half stars again. It's about the same for me as the first book. This one does take place during autumn. There's like a fun uh, costume contest like for Halloween. So that's really fun. It's definitely very atmospheric. I'm reading this during the wrong time of year, but I'll probably include this in like an autumn recommendations video later on this year because it's definitely got that very seasonal autumn like Halloween vibes which I love. So basically in this we have our main character Carly and she owns a grilled cheese eatery which already best location ever. Love cheese. Fantastic. She gave me so many ideas for grilled cheese recipes that I want to try myself now. I'm on a grilled cheese kick. But she opens this grilled cheese eatery in the first book and she's conducting business in the second book. She decides to enter this Halloween like food contest to try to bring more awareness to her new shop. However, this man named Ferris owns like a sub shop nearby and he is the like reigning champion of this competition and he's also very aggressive towards her. He's not very friendly, like no friendly competition there. Well, Ferris ends up being found dead and there's just a whole host of suspects that come out of the works. The thing I will say about this book is I had a very hard time keeping track of all the characters. And like I said, I read the first book so it's not like I didn't 
you know, I just jumped in and maybe didn't know some of the characters that were existing in the first book, I just found that there was a lot going on with how many characters were there. It was just like a little too much for my preference, a little too many suspects, like too wide of a pool for my personal taste. The other thing I'll say is that, like the first book, the ending wraps up very quickly in this series, and I, I think I prefer a little more depth with my endings. Like I like a little more explanation and even like a chapter where the characters are all chilling after the ending kind of just like settling down. Like I like that personally so that's just a personal preference. The writing itself was good, the mystery was good. I like the characters. I'm feeling more connected with them. The first book in the series I wasn't really feeling super attached to Carly but this one I'm definitely enjoying her more. She's definitely a pretty aggressive sleuth I will say. Like she definitely goes hard. <laughs> it kind of rubs people the wrong ways in some cases. But I do enjoy that, and also, fun little tidbit, her dog is named Havarti, which I love. I mean, it's a grilled cheese mystery, her dog's Havarti, I mean, that's great. So I do plan on continuing this series, I think the third book is coming out this year, so I am planning on continuing it. It's probably not going to be an all-time favorite, unless the, you know, the series continues to go upwards for me, but three and a half stars, it's solid, I enjoy the theme, it's a fun cozy, I loved the heavy seasonal vibes in this, so I'm hoping there's a strong theme like that in the third book, but I would recommend it if you like cozies, you like the cheese theme, I'd go for it. It's fun. Next we have Killer Blonde by Laura Levine. This is a Jane Austen mystery, Jane with an I, and our, our main character in this is a freelance writer, and she's always taking odd jobs to make it and survive. I'm a freelance writer as well, so I kind of enjoy like reading from a freelance writer's perspective. I think that's really fun. This is a, it is a cozy mystery, but it is first and foremost, in my opinion, a comedy. Like it's a, com it's heavy in the comedy. This is a book that is not like politically correct. I mean this was this one came out in the early 2000s so that could be part of it but it's definitely very like I mean the main character is making fun of herself and like everybody and it's done in a comedic way. It's it's heavy in the comedy. It's not meant to like really like make a dig at anyone. It's just heavy in that comedic sense and it's really enjoyable. Basically our main character in this she gets hired to write this like cooking book slash memoir of this like famous lady. Yeah, Beverly Hills socialite Sue Ellen Kingsley. And so she offers Jane mega bucks to ghostwrite a book. So Jane decides, you know what, I need the money. She, I'm getting mega bucks for this. Like I can write that. That's fine. And she starts working for Sue Ellen. However, it's a pretty unorthodox relationship. Sue Ellen wants to dictate the book to her from the bathtub, which is kind of odd. But Jane's like, you know what, for this money, I can do that, that's fine. And she gets to start to know Sue Ellen's family a little bit, she has dinner with them, until unfortunately one day Sue Ellen is found dead in the bathtub, electrocuted from like a dropped like appliance, like a blow dryer or something, in the water. And it's very dramatic, and one of the main suspects is her daughter, like her stepdaughter, and Jane has befriended her and she's like there's no way there's no way so she starts to look into the mystery to clear the daughter's name and it's a, it's a, just a comedic it's it's funny like if you for me this is a great one to break up like thrillers or historical fiction or more like heavy reading you know more like things with like heavier emotional themes because this is so lighthearted. it's so fast-paced and most of these books aren't even like this one's just 220 some pages like it's like they're very short so it's very brief it's funny I love the covers she also named her cat Prozac, which <laughs> leads to some really funny lines because she'll be talking to the cat. It's just, you have to read it, I think, to understand it, but I'm hoping I'm doing a decent job of telling you. It's very comedic. If you like a cozy mystery that is very light, super comedic, punchy, makes fun of everything, very, like, realistic character who's always, like, teasing herself, making fun of herself, I think you enjoy this. Okay, so this I technically have a few more short stories in, but I'm going to include it in this because I've read most of them. That is the Miss Marple The Complete Short Stories Collection by Agatha Christie. There are 20 short stories in total. I am specifically skipping one because it's a Christmas theme, so I want to save it for Christmas. But the other 19 I have been working my way through. I'm only... I'm like 70 pages short right now out of like 300 some pages, so I wanted to mention this because this has been such... An enjoyable read. I have been having a hard time getting into short story reading even though I want to get into it because so many authors have great collections like Agatha Christie and I want to read more of them. But this was a fantastic way. I've been reading one to two of these a night before I start reading like my main book before bed and it's been a really enjoyable like little segue into reading. It's been relaxing. I've actually solved a couple of these which hasn't been the case with any of the Agatha Christie novels yet. I haven't 
fully called one of those yet, but I have solved a few of these, so there we go. I've done something with that, but this is so much fun. Miss Marple is a hoot. Most of the mysteries for the first like half or so take place with the Tuesday Club murders, which is this really fun setting. It's like this group of pretty smart people. Like you have like a doctor, like a, a policeman, you have Miss Marple and you have like her cousin or like nephew or something. And you got this like host of adults and they all go around basically telling each other stories where they know the answer to it. And it's like usually involving murder or some kind of crazy mystery. And of course, Miss Marple's always the one to solve it. And it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. The short stories in this are around like 15 to 20 pages. So you can definitely sit down and enjoy this. I've even read like one of these on like a lunch break, which has been really fun. So I highly recommend this. I'm almost done with this, this collection. So I can say I've actually finished the short story collection and now it's got me in a good rhythm to start like the Hercule Perot one or the classic mystery author one that I have. So I'm very excited. I bought this in my used book haul that I did earlier this month. I will link it above. I got some stellar deals, like unbelievable deals. And this was one of them. I got this for a dollar. It's like happy birthday to me. This was amazing. I definitely recommend it. If you haven't checked out her short stories, Agatha Christie does it just as well with short stories in my opinion. Okay, so this next one is a long-term favorite of mine, the Library Lovers Mystery Series by Jen McKinley. This is one for the books. I think this is book 10 in the series, so I'm pretty far into the series. Basically, our main character, Lindsay, she's the library director at Briar Creek, and she is getting married. She's getting excited for her wedding. It's only like a week away. Unfortunately, like a week before her wedding, on this like nearby island because it takes place in I always picture it like kind of Massachusetts or like somewhere like the Bay Area, like the Cape Cod kind of area. Um, a body washes up on shore and it's actually the man who was supposed to be the justice of peace at Lindsay and her groom's wedding and it's also someone the groom knew personally like they were friends so he's just devastated and there's just a lot of mystery around it and who would have wanted him hurt and they had also attended like a party the night before and seen him there and alive and well and it's just really sad and it's putting a damper on everything and so she starts to look into it to try to solve it for her groom's sake and just like looking into it for the because they were friends and it's just a really great mystery very character driven I definitely recommend reading this series in order I feel like it wouldn't be very enjoyable to jump into this randomly like some of the other cozies I've talked about today but this one I would read in order really enjoyable a fun addition to the mystery series I love her little dog his name is Heathcliff and there's always amazing literary references scattered throughout these books, which I love most of the mysteries. Not this one as much, but most of the mysteries in the series have like some kind of bookish element to it as well, which I think is amazing. So I highly recommend the series. If you like bookish cozy mysteries, I think you can't go wrong with the book, the Library Lovers Mystery Series by Jen McKinley. All right, and last but not least, we have Murder with a Cherry on Top by Cynthia Baxter. This is part of the Lickety Splits cozy mystery series and the Lickety Splits Ice Cream Shop Mystery Series, I should say. I read this again for the cozy reading vlog that I mentioned earlier. This was great. I really enjoyed this. This is book one in the series. I had it jumped into book two because my library had it, and I ended up wanting to go back and read book one, so I ordered it. I enjoyed that. This was a really fun, classic cozy mystery. It felt very summery and springy with the coat, like, you know, the cozy ice cream theme to it. I love reading, like, ice cream themed mysteries this time of year. It's just perfect. And basically, our main character in this is named Kate, and she's recently opened the Lickety Splits shop, and she lives with her grandmother. They have the sweetest relationship. She calls her Grams, which is what I called my late grandmother, so it just gets my heart every time. And Kate is a really great character. She's very realistic. She's fun. She's pretty like punctual. She's very creative. I just, I think she's a fun character to follow along. And basically her rival from high school, Ashley, has a bakery down the street. And as soon as Kate opens her ice cream shop, she begins, Ashley begins to sell ice cream, even though she's like a baked goods bakery. And that kind of gets under Kate's skin because she feels like she's doing it on purpose. They kind of have an altercation and Ashley shows up dead. You know, classic cozy mystery plotline. This though did not have a classic cozy mystery ending for me. This had like a, I mean this had a good like punchy ending. I really, I didn't call this. If you've read this and you, you called the ending, congratulations. Like that's really amazing because it was an ending. Like I was just sitting there like, wow. Um, but fantastic, very fast paced, cozy, very yummy. You'll want ice cream. Get some ice cream if you're reading this. It's so enjoyable. I definitely recommend it. I want to check to see if my library has book three now or get my hands on that in some way because this was just an enjoyable read. I want to learn more about Kate 
and her grandmother and some of her family. I just, it's so cozy. It's perfect. Alright guys, I feel like I'm losing my voice. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end. Please let me know what did you read this month? Would you recommend it? Would you not recommend it? Have you read anything that I mentioned in this video? What were your thoughts on it? And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already. I do post new book content every single week on this channel and I would love if you'd stick around. If you like mysteries especially, you'll love this channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!